Jesus, teach him, teach him his own blocking to me, right, from the center, or from how we do it in the shop, you know, the tail back here. It's no different. I don't teach it any different. Okay? A lot of people ask that question off the bat, the first thing. I don't teach zone blocking any different. I teach zone blocking with two principles involved. All right, the thing they have to understand is, are they covered or are they uncovered? All right? First thing that I talk to the line about. All right? Now, within that scheme, okay, we do, do people always, the second question is, they ask, do we block looks? Yes, we block looks. I study the opponent, I study what their looks are, all right, what, and what we're going to see. So we just don't go up there and go, okay, let's zone to the right and block this guy right here and climb up and find a guy in our area. All right, that's a misnomer of zone blocking. You have specific guys that you're going to, all right? Which is why the second thing I talk about in zone blocking, all right, are the calls for the line. All right, we have calls. All right, so when I got to, when we got to BG and did this, and this was a huge problem now, understand this, because when we ran this at Ohio State, we ran the inside and outside zone a little bit when I was at Ohio State. And the problem was, we never knew, number one, the two guys that were working together, based on scheme. And the second thing was, when we did figure that out, all right, there was always a question on who they were working to. All right? So I wanted to put in a system of calls that they could make at the last scrimmage that, that, number one, made them understand exactly who they were blocking with, all right, the partner they were working with, and then exactly who they were going to. So we had to come up with a system of calls. All right? So I started naming the blocks. All right? So let's say we're going to run zone to the right, to the front side. This is inside zone we're talking now. Now, the only thing that changes, all right, if you're going to run outside zone towards two, and I don't know that you are or not, okay, let's skip that, all right, inside zone to the right, if we have a combination block between the tackle and the tight end, we call it Ted, all right, if it's going to be a combination block between the tackle and the guard, we call it a tag, all right, if the center is going to use the front side guard in his scheme, he's going to say scoop, all right, if a front dictates that he wants to use the back side guard, He's going to say slip, all right? And the tackle guard backside is tagged, same as this front side, as would be the tackle tight end backside being a tech block, all right? So I taught him those combinations. So once you realize what the front is, we're going to block it on front. Here's the calls that we make, all right? So they would come up right now. Now, where does the system of calls start, all right? It starts, all right, if there's a tight end in the game, okay, I always started it with the tight end. All right? Now, if there's no tight end in the game, all right, the first, all right, uncovered lineman starts. Now, that was a general rule that I put in, okay? Now, I make all these guys, and that was just a starting point, I make all these guys recognize for us, and they should all be echoing the calls or making the calls once we've diagnosed what the front is, okay? But that's a starting point that we came up with, all right? Now, if the tight end doesn't say anything, when he's in the game, all right, which there's times that he won't say anything, all right? Then we go right back to the first uncovered lineman, all right, which is in an odd front, the right guard who knows he's the first uncovered lineman, he's going to make a tag call, all right? He's going to say tag, tag, tag. So right now, the front side tackle, all the tight end, and the back, the center and the back side knows exactly what's going on. These two are working together for him. Now the center can call his according to block accordingly to what they've called on the front side. Okay, now the second part of the call is the number, all right, of the linebacker that you're working to. All right, and I did this through two days when we first worked this in Bowling Green. So they come up to the line, you hear tag 51, all right, tag 48, tag 59, whatever the call of that linebacker, whatever his number is you're working to, all right, make that call so that we know. So if it is a standing front or they're moving around, this is the guy that gets confused, all right? This center has to know, all right, what linebacker you're working to initially, all right? Once you put it in right now, if my kids come up to the line, you won't hear any of that stuff, all right? Because they've worked together long enough. This is how I installed it and taught it for the first year. I made them make this call, made them make these calls, and every day I'd stand right back there and I'd make them make the calls so that everybody heard them. Then I'd go into the cadence and snap the football. So they all had a base foundation for what they were doing, learning how to zone block. All right, period. And I made them do it and I made them make the call. All right, so then we go on accordingly through all the fronts. Tag 48, tag 51. Now, how would we block this play? All right, we're going to erase all this stuff. I put up initially and we'll go through the fronts. 
And what we did then we'll go through the footwork accordingly and targets.
is this. All right? Mm -hmm. First thing they did to us, same deal. Here we are on his own. I'll show you some cutouts. All right, tight end's there. He locks on. They make a tag call. He hits the guard. He picks in the tight end wheels, and the Mike linebacker hits you for about a two yard loss. Mm -hmm. All right? So your tight end, and I put this on the tight ends, it's not on the Packers, it's not on anybody else. All right? It's on that tight end. He has to read the stance of these two guys and the width of the bike. If this is a blitz, they run. Now, if they didn't run this blitz, you broke them down, they didn't run it, don't put it in the kid's head. You know what I mean? <laughs> don't even bring it up. But if it's something that they've done and it's a problem, and I'll tell you, it's a way to attack tight ends on teams. It's a good, good stuff. So, this guy's going to cheat and this guy's going to cheat. They're probably going to be tight, head up, maybe moves outside, but tight on you. Tight on us guys. All right? If that happens, you need to give him insurance policy. And in, in, in our scheme, his insurance policy is a gang call. Okay? Now, what does a gang call mean? All right? It means no combinations. All right? I'm not comboing anybody, boys. This is a true zone play now. Step, 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 and read what happens. All right? So we'll all take that slide base step. I'm going to snap the football. We'll all take that six inch jab, and now we're going to read what they do. All right? But what it does is it alerts this tackle and it alerts this guard. Hey, guys, I think we're getting this double slant move. All right? I think it's coming. If it does, I try it. If it doesn't come, who cares? That's the beauty of the thing. Take your footwork, man, and still react. But all I'm doing is giving you a heads up so that we don't get picked here by this stunt. And believe me, they'll show it. This guy's alignment and this guy is with will show that stunt. All right, so again, we had to come up with something, and I had to come up with something. I'm a, I'm a big guy in, in letting the fucking kids go play the game. Meaning, if I'm in a drive, and we're going to run a 12 play drive, all right, and we start the first, first, first play, all right, we run the zone, and that stunt gets us, and that guy whacks us in the back, and it's a two yard loss. I don't want those guys to have to wait until we lose the football, come back over on the sideline, and have me draw that shit up for them. I want them to have the answer right there. So they go back to the huddle. Hey guys, they're ready to damn Mike thing. Let's go. Let's, let's gang the thing next time we run. That's taken care of. So I like to give them tools, and we always talk about a tool belt with the linemen. I have to give them the tools. When they go to that free game, here's your belt. All right? If that comes, if this comes, this stuff comes and hits us on first and ten. We drive down to the goal line. I run the same play in the five yard line, and that stuff hits us again. It isn't their fault. It's my fault. Because I'm not, you have the tools you needed to go, man. I have to give you those tools. This is one of the tools that they need out there in the field to help them when something bad happens. All right? So I try to give them tools to help those bad situations. That's the first one. All right? If that stunt occurs to you, that tight end, you have to give him an answer in order for him not to get picked and he will block that stunt. All right? And that's the first answer that we use on the front side of that. All right? Now, let's go back to the rest of the scheme. Just saying it's a base run. <clears throat> All right, base deal. All right, he slide base and she's out of the pit. All right, now, tackle. Okay, we're back to the next two inside guys. All right, covered guy and uncovered guy. All right, now, here's the three principles, all right, for a covered lineman. Okay, there's three things I talked to him about. All right, first thing is, you have to look at is, number one, or A, alignment, all right, of down linemen. Right? Where is he? Meaning, how tight is he to me? How wide is he to me? All right? What is his stance? All right? What's he doing? All right? What's he look like he doing? He's doing. Okay? So I have to analyze that first. Second thing I talked to him about, all right, is position of second level defender. Okay? Where is he? Meaning, who's the guy we're going to? All right, they just made a tag call 51. All right, I want to analyze where my D lineman is, and I want to find out where the second level defender is. That helps me with my block. All right, and then the third thing is appropriate footwork. Okay, here we go. Now, nothing changes, all right, nothing changes when I talk about the uncovered guy. He's looking at the same things. The alignment of the down guy, where is he? The 
position of the second level guy, which I'm going to, and now what's my footwork? All right, so both those, those things are the things that I talk about, all right, to those guys. And that's what they have to analyze, and that's what they have to prepare themselves for, okay? Now, those things all take into consideration, all right? Covered guy's job, all right? I'm covered. I'm stepping off here. Let's say I got a five technique. And let's talk in terms of five. There is no, there is no base footwork. And I get a lot of questions, and I'm asked a lot of things about this because it's all we do. But what's your footwork on the front side of the zone? What's your footwork on a covered guy? What's your footwork if the backers here? Well, you know what? All those have different answers to them because our footwork changes. If this guy moves, our footwork changes. If he's here, our footwork changes. If that guy bounces out here, my footwork changes. So there is no, oh, this is the Bowling Green zone step. All right, that's not what we do. All right, because I want at all costs, and I tell my guys this, when we, when we put this stuff in initially, I want to make sure and be, as best we can of all of our zone plays, all right, that we get four hands on the down line. All right, if I can get four hands and move that guy, guys, that's the ultimate, that's the ultimate. That's, a, that's an A-plus for you to play. i got to have four hands on those down guys because I want to create movement. I want those guys moved off the football. Now, what he does will predicate whether I can get four hands on them or not. Right? So I'm a covered guy. What can this guy do to me? Well, he can go outside. Don't let me reach him. All right? He can play right into me. And try to step in and stop me. All right? Or he's on a stunt, he's going to slam to the inside. So I have three things I got to worry about as a cover lineman. Okay? What, what is my first worry? All right? What I tell my lineman is whether you are covered or uncovered, okay, you have to block worst case scenario. All right? So you have to say to yourself in, in teaching this, I'm this guy right here, there he is. What is based on his alignment? What is the worst thing that that guy can do to me right now? Well, if I'm covered and I got a five technique, in my opinion, the worst thing that can happen is for him to outside penetrate through my shoulder. Because then the ball's getting turned back inside, zone by zone. Right? So I'm going to block so that that doesn't happen. Right? I'm going to react to the other two scenarios that can happen to me, but I'm damn well not going to let the worst case scenario based on his alignment. And if he's a five technique, and he's a loose five technique. His coach put him there for a reason. He put him there so your ass doesn't get reached, all right, and don't get knocked off the ball. Drive that guy in the backfield, okay? So I'm going to take my step accordingly. I'm going to take my zone step, all right? I'm going to take it again, six inches. I'm going to gain width. I'm going to gain ground up field. I'm going to aim at his outside armpit, and I'm going to try to knock that son of a bitch right off the football, all right? So if I step, okay, if I step there, you're the five technique. There's my step, there's my head going to the armpit. If you stay there, I'm going to two-hand you. I'm going to put my helmet on the, on the armpit, my screws, and I'm going to take these two hands, and I'm going to jam right under your breastplate, grab you, and I'm going to run you off on that angle. All right? That's my job. I'm going to run you off right off on this angle. Okay? If I take my first step, and you decide to run, okay, I'm going to try my best to get my hand, my front side hand, and my eyes on my target, probably won't do it because he's going to run out of there. He's told by his coach, don't get reached. Fine. I will take my inside hand at that point. I will turn, and I will run you completely sideways to the sideline. Right? I don't care if, if, if I'm trailing you, if he's right here, and I'm trailing in a position like that. It doesn't matter to me. If he wants to expand that gap, take his momentum and expand him to the sideline. Run him to the sideline as fast as you can run to the sideline. Okay? Now, third case scenario, what can you do? You can go inside. Okay? Great. If I'm the cover lineman, right, I should be able to read his stance, first of all, and see that he won't go inside unless he's covering some part of my body. Alright? So my step now probably won't be, if he's tight, probably won't be that 60. It may be six straight up the field now in his armpit. Because his armpit's tighter to me. He's not the loose five, he's a tight five. So why the hell step why? Why is he tightened down, Tommy? Because he's probably going inside. Great. Block his ass for you. All right? So, as I step, I'm going to step that six inches right at that armpit. Now, what happens? He's inside. My job at this point, 
all right, is to take the blow off of the uncovered guy. All right, my only job I have. Don't let this guy completely come free and whack the shit out of your guard. All right, he can't come free. So how do I do that? All right, coach, here we go. He's tightened down on me now. Hey, he might be going inside. I'm up the field six inches, there he goes. I take my inside arm and my inside leg and I throw it straight up the field and I get any piece of his body that I can get. Just deflect him. Whatever you can get. Hey, if I get a good piece, get a good piece. If I don't get a good piece, just deflect him. Just take any deflection so that your buddy can redirect, punch and steer and take the block over. All right? Just don't let him come clean. Because what you'll see kids do is this. My guys still do it. There's the five technique, there's the step, and then they end up here, and there that guy goes. Well, once I've crossed over and that guy slants, my buddy's dead. I'm dead, and this kid's dead because he's going to get hit. And now the ball's, now the ball's changing. If you're going to stand there, you can move over. All right? But if you're going to stand there for a while, yeah. you going to go back to class? Yeah, Okay. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, right. Thanks, man. Okay, so that's the job of the uncovered guy, or, or the covered guy, excuse me. Take a piece off if he comes inside. So those three things I have to react. Now, the uncovered guy, same deal. I'm uncovered, all right? Number one, block worst case scenario. What's worst case scenario for him? My worst case scenario is that guy slamming full bore and knocking me in the face. Okay, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to block worst case scenario. I'm going to take my step. Now my step, again, the uncovered guy, I will let step flat. I don't bucket step, coach. I don't, I don't do the old back up bucket step to get in course. I think that's too, I think it, it slows him up and gets your shoulders up too high. All right, but I will let him slide lateral, all right, in order to get himself in a position on that guy's armpit if he does slant to me. Okay? I won't bucket step. I don't bucket step. I don't drop step. All right? We don't do that. What I will do is if we know what the front is, or they can adjust as a general principle, all right, you'd like to have your cover lineman crowd the line of scrimmage a little bit, and you'd like to have your uncovered guys just back up a little bit so that they're not totally on the same plane. It may be four inches. Back your guard up, you said. Yep. The uncovered guy. If my tackles are uncovered, and it's this type of front, all right? I'm going to back him up a little bit now. You know what I'm saying? And I want him to crowd the ball so I can get the next guy in behind without having too much of a problem. All right? But not again, not that it's a big deal, not, not that it's noticeable. It just helps these kids out without having to tell them I got a bucket step and then try to get in there. I want them rolling off the football. So I want to roll a slide step. I'm rolling my hips and my weight as I'm coming up semi-square on that defensive end if he slants to me. Okay? If he slants to me, I'm expecting help from the tackle. I'm expecting him to knock off a little bit of piece of the guy. But if he doesn't, well, I've got to put myself in a position when he slants. All right? Good step there. Second step. Right down his inside footstep. And we have to meet with a collision. All right? And I've got to put my head right underneath his chin. My screw's right underneath his chin. I have to punch and then steer and try to get my shoulders back square. All right? I got to punch and steer and do the best job I can of getting my shoulders back square. That only happens if the tackle lets them go. That only happens if the tackle lifts them, which should never happen if they're doing it correct. Okay? Now, second case. All right, slamming into the first one. Second case, let's say he plays heavy. Plays through the shoulder, plays tight and heavy. I step, I read that hip, which is the target for the uncovered guy. All right? Excuse me, I didn't even tell you that. Front side guys place that armpit. What I read first, as an uncovered guy, my first read is that hip. Because that hip is going to tell me what he's doing. All right? So when I read the hip, the hip plays into my tackle. He goes to reach as a five technique, he plays into him. Okay? I know right now I'm going to one-hand this thing. All right? And I talk in terms of one hand, two hand, zero hands. All right? He comes into me and slants. What's that? Two hands, obviously. I got to take him on, I got to block him. All right, he hangs tough, I'm gonna to one-hand him. So he's blocking my guy, all right? I'm not trying to run past this thing and take this block over, okay? It's not outside zone. I'm trying to move him. So I'm gonna step, get in his pocket, and take the one hand I have, my right hand, focus on the hip, and I'm gonna jam the hip, and I'm gonna hit my eyes up on this linebacker, all right? 
keeping my backside arm free because I don't want my shoulders to turn. So I'm going to one hand him. All right? He's got two hands out. They're fighting. I'm going to attack that hip and punch the hell out of that hip if I can punch that hip. Okay? And then I'm going to read this guy. And I'm going to start to push. And I'm going to hunker down. And we're just going to push and walk this guy off until this guy declares what he wants to do. I do not declare to a linebacker until he declares to the line of scrimmage. Because some kids want to come off, tap the hip, take him off, and then he flows over here and they're oh shit, I, I, I can't get him. All right? So the biggest thing on this thought here when that guy plays into it is patience. Get the hip, start working, driving him off the ball, and make this guy make a decision. All right? When he declares, meaning when he declares, I come off and block him. If he doesn't declare, if he's hanging, hanging, trying to find a window, you hang, 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 and knock him off into him. All right? So patience is the biggest part of this deal right here. I've got to have patience on that thing. And I can't be too soon to come off. Either guy cannot be too soon to come off. All right? Third scenario. All right? Slants outside. I go up, I step, I watch the hip, hip's gone. Uh-oh. Okay. Zero hands. I step, my second step redirects, I'm back up the field now, and I'm going to attack the outside linebacker in his outside armpit. Slowly, again, slowly with patience, because what I don't want to do, what I don't want to do is this. I don't want to have that man fly out of there. All right, here's I step, and, and I take off straight at that backer. Because if I stop and trade off, take off straight at the backer, what's he going to do? He's going to step up, blow up, pop, pop me. Now the flow of the play, the idea of them running to the sideline, all right, I've let that flow, I've, I've lost the flow. So I still want to keep attacking that man on the outside to get him to flow, all right, to buy my back time to find a nice crease in there. Again, it's patience, patience, patience. All right, patience, patience, patience on that block. All right, so... Those are the three scenarios. That's how I teach now. You can take any front on demand and put it up there, and it's the same. So that block I just explained to you is the same right there. All right? That block I just explained to you is the same right there. All right? My footwork and everything we do, okay, depends on, all right, his alignment and his alignment. Take the proper footwork. All right? Taking the proper footwork. So, it, it actually, and that's the other beauty of the thing. You can sit there and talk about zone blocking. You can get in lines of two. And it can be your starting center next to your tight end. Put a freaking guy here and a guy here. It doesn't make any difference. It makes no difference to me. There's two guys working a combo. His footwork ought to be the same as his footwork based on where these guys are aligned. Put a guy out here, same deal. I don't care if it's a starting tight end in the center. I'm stepping here, I'm stepping like it's a three technique, I'm stepping like it's a nine. It doesn't matter, guys are guys. You have to decide where their fronts are, plug the fronts in, and let them go. All right now, there's one more thing on the back side, all right, that I want to talk about, because this was another one that you'll see on the tape, people hunting us up a little bit on it, because it's another great, great deal. All right, you get a tight front, what we call tight defense, over defense. All right, now, you're running this over the tight end again. Okay? There's a couple things that you can do with your center there. Alright? Our rule is this. Okay? Our rule is this. The center's going to single block that nose guard until he gets on the front side guard. Alright? If he's not on the front side guard, I mean, if he's not covering him whatsoever, alright, the center's going to block him on his own. So if we get a tight defense, this guy's just a shame. Like, you know, I guess that's the number one deal you probably see with me. Alright? He's going to make a call. All right, telling everybody, badger. Okay, which means what? I'm going to base his nose up. He's mine. All right, you guys find your combos, block the defense accordingly. It's a tight front. I'm going to badger this guy. I'm going to badger this guy and, and, and block him on my own. All right, I'm blocking by myself. I'm still going to do it. All right, so he's going to block him. Now, front side, we get a tag block. Back side, we get a tag block and a solo block out of this guy. Okay? Now, as soon as you do that, as soon as you do that, all right, first thing the defense is going to do in the stunt that, that, that just was a nightmare against us, Oklahoma ran against us last year. 
same deal. But again, the toolbox, you gotta be prepared for it. First one is this. Okay? As you got your center badger, as soon as they, if they're sharp, first thing they see in the press box, say the center's base the nose up. Drive the nose backside in gap, what happens? Here's my tag, nose drives backside, bang bang collision, wheel linebacker two yard loss. Okay? Same deal. Right? It's no different than the stuff that they run on the front side. Tight defense, eagle defensive teams run the front side, back side, front side, back side, front side, and they mix it up and confuse it up. And it's good stuff. Okay? So the tight end now, again, if you if I drew it right here, this is this is what I like about it. I don't know that anybody else anybody else agrees with me, but there's the Sam, there's an end, there's a mic, right? There's a center, there's a guard, there's an end, back side. Okay. That's the same damn stunt. Mm -hmm. It's the same stunt. But everybody, I can argue with anybody all day long. It's the same stunt working with guys. So now, the tight end in the center. When the center sees this nose, cheat the head up like he's going to cheat or cheat to real, real tight. Like he guys have been tight on me. All right? He's going to go back here. We give the center a call. All right? He makes a zebra call. Meaning zone. All right? Meaning all back, back. Gang is strictly a front side call. Zebra is the same exact call for the back side. Same exact call. So the center's going to say, guys, I got to zebra this because I think that stunt's coming. I don't want to get picked. So he's going to step. He's going to step accordingly for that. He's going to step accordingly for that. And we boom, boom, boom. And we take the stunt. So if it happens and it catches us, it won't catch us a second or third time. All right? And they have to be smart enough to realize that guy from a true shade is not going to run this stunt. He's going to run it from a real, real tight alignment and tighten himself down so that he can get to his responsibility. Where's his responsibility? Backside A gap. Where's his responsibility? Frontside C gap. They're not going to do that from wide alignments. All right? So those two guys got to be sharp and recognize it. And now we got two calls, all right? that take us out of bad situations and get us in a good situation. All right, and both those guys have it. It's the same style on the front side as it is on the back side, in my opinion. But you have to be ready, you have to be ready to block those two situations. All right, in his own blocking scheme. All right? And that, I'll go over the three technique now. Thank you, too, George. Mm -hmm. Any questions on anything else on that? You got the targets. What's his tailback what? Hotwork, footwork. Oh, footwork, good. Okay. Just to review that from my own press That's fine. That's fine. All right. All right. Our footwork. All right. From the tailback. He is going to open, cross over. He's one, two, three. It's three steps, I believe, to the mesh, coach. And I'll show you. I'll look at another tape. I want to make sure I get it on myself. 15 read. One, two, three. Yep, it's three. It's three. It's one, two, three, and to the mesh, and you're responsible for the mesh. Now, what's the mesh, right? When Bowling Green talks of it, when we talk in terms of mesh, all right? People ask about this play, our zone replays, is the ball stuck in there? Does he ride it? None of that, none of that happens. All right, we don't ride, he's not riding the side. That ball is either there or it's not there. So when that ball snapped in the midst of his one, two, three, what is that guy doing? If that quarterback sees that end is coming up the field, the ball is there. He stands there. He doesn't do anything. He just stands there with the football. All right? If he sees that man chase, when our tackle goes down, the football's not there. He sees it. So he just whoop, waits for the tailback to go, and then he's gone. So there's no stick it in, pull it out, all that kind of stuff. It doesn't happen. By the time I get there, his decision has to be made. Has to be made. All right, it's either in there or it's out of there. It's there or it's not there. One or the other. Okay? Now, what we tell our tailback as far as target on this play. Same deal from under center, because we run from under center too. My target is the butt of the tackle. All right? My target is the butt of the front side tackle. Now, I have to get there. That's why his footwork and the gun, we talk in terms of one, two, three to the mesh. One, two, pass the mesh. That's critical. It's five steps. 
any way you slice it. If it ain't five, you can run the play right. All right? That's my opinion. Because what happens to your backs is they go one, two, three, they get the ball, and they start to do this. Well, what happens to this? Come downhill right now. That guy's not going to be blocked, and that guard's going to try to fall back in and block him. He's going to get hit right here, and people are going to start yelling at the fucking guard. Mr. Uh, oh, the guard didn't walk in. Bullshit. I'll be the first guy that runs from back here and grabs the back and chokes him. All right? Because it ain't their fault. Your job, these two steps, in my opinion, are part of the blocking scheme. If you don't take those two steps past that mess point, we might as well not block it like this because it isn't going to work. All right? So if that happens and somebody undercuts this play, undercuts it in here because he's doing that, it isn't these guys' fault. All right? It's that fault because he didn't go one, two, three, four, five. Now, once I've taken my fifth step, all right, I have to read the first cover lineman past the center. All right? So there the front is. Okay? And we don't count again. We don't count him too high until he touches the guard. All right? If he's a nose, that's the first line to pass the center. All right? If there's a guard covered guy, that's the first line to pass the center. That's my key. So when I get to there and get the ball, what has this pitcher done? If that guy's stretched, bang the ball up the field. All right? If that guy's been captured, I may keep it outside a little bit farther. All right? But I have to read at that point, I have to read first covered lineman past the center. As soon as I do that, you be a ball carrier and run the football. Coaching's over at that point. All right? One, two, three, four, five steps. Read the first covered lineman and then bang the football in the first vertical crease you see. And that's when we teach the back. And that's imperative, same deal. That's imperative to the back. All right? That he's on that footwork and he's on that course. All right? Because he has to be. If he's not, Play more than that. All right? Play some more than that. Other than that. Okay? Now, the only difference, the only thing I'm talking about, I guess, unless you have a question, is to a three technique now. All right? When we run into a three. Instead, I got other markers down here. That'll start to wear. Okay. I don't care. All right? I don't care 
if that's the case. Now, the other thing that you can do, and, I, and I've done this one time, let's say you're not getting a bunch of three techniques beer, all right? And you're brief and you feel pretty confident, all right, about the job that your guard can do. Okay? Then let the guard be the slide base guy, like the tackle, make those both man blocks, and step the center here, double him to here. All right? You can do that. We did it, we did it with Wake Temple two years ago because they had Joe Clucko's son right there. We couldn't block the seven gun. All right? We couldn't block. So I couldn't run, I couldn't run zone to a three technique because our guard tried to cut him off and that damn son of a bitch is back here four yards. So okay, then come up with something. All right, so what happened? And I didn't even make this adjustment. I said at the time, John Mazur on the sideline in the middle of the series. He, he said, coach, he came aside. I said, what'd you do? He said, I changed it from a scoop to a slip. I said, why? He said, the coach's backside guard cut, couldn't cut him off. So he said, let's not scoop it, work with the front side, let's slip it. So they changed it in the middle of the drive, again, because they had the ability to, to do that. They knew, okay, we got a problem here. He can't get him, let's scoop it. Let's take the good guy and let's double him and work to the front side. So that's the, that's the change they made. Right? And they did that on their own, and they doubled it, we went boom, 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 and ran the play. Right? Much, much better right? that run that way. Now, the other side of the point, right? the other thing that you can do, we started doing this, you can check the play, right? Okay? If you don't have that ability or you're comfortable doing it the other way, all right, and you can check the play to a shade, which we, we've been there before. And said, okay, if we can't cut that son of a bitch off, then don't ever put him on the back side. All right, he's going to be on the front side. We'll always run the ball to him. That way, we don't have to get this cutoff block back side. You got good angles here to double up. You got good angles here to either double here or double here, depending on what we want to do, and run the play to a shade. All right, so you don't have to worry about that backside cutoff. All right? I don't worry about it because we'll cut him or either just put our helmet right in his ribs and drive him past and try to jump cut the thing. But, so we do it there again. There's two or three or four ways that you can give these gentlemen to handle that during the course of the game so that we don't have to wait till the end of the drive and make over. Now, what the hell do I do? They've already got answers that they can do within the scheme. All right? But that's how we block into a three technique. I always take the center there. Unless that guy's a war daddy, then double him and go to the front side. All right. Any uh, yep. uh, I guess only because I've been doing it that way, I'm used to it. I don't know if you told me that if Suriana did or what, but running it into the uh, into the I two. Mm -hmm. you know, so we're scooping a three. Okay. I like that, buddy. Um, I guess that's our predominant philosophy, and what I'm looking to do is I'll probably I'll probably uh, check it in the huddle, check with me, and then we'll check. You get about two I. Yeah. God, that's awesome. Yeah, run it right into that. Cool. And then and then if and then when they adjust, then I could use some of these other tools to run it into the three technique. Exactly. Right. See, that's what see I, I would if I had a two eye, I would always run it to a three technique. You would always run it into the three to, technique? Yeah, yeah because two eye. I know I can get them cut off. Right. I got a backside cut back now. I mean okay. if I if you know what I mean, just in my turn okay. of thinking, coach. Okay. When I get a two eye, two things come to mind. Number one is all right, run zone to the three. Why is that better than not? Why is that better than not? Why is it backside cut off better than the three technique backside cut off? Oh, I, don't, I, don't, I can do it with one guy. Oh, uh, okay. You see what I'm saying? I'm not involved with him. Right. I think I think my guys are good enough that I can go. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. Sure. Now. Right. When we blow that guy, there's a crater to me. Right. Yeah. I, I want right. to get in there. Okay. That's where I want to go. So that's my thing. All right. The second thing is if you get too high. All right, is, you know what I mean? Whack, whack. Big critter in there again. You know what I mean? I love, I love running traffic in that damn place. Well, that's why we, we check that. It's awesome. All the time. Awesome. It's great. All right, as long as, and again, if it's a two I, if it's a two I and a three, and there's the backers, why the hell would you run track? I'm going to run speed option now. Yeah, no shit. Now, when they start doing this, because I'm running speed out south of Wazoo, not travel. Right. You know what I mean? So I always look at the width of 
of these two guys, okay. and then and then I'm trying to understand the complement between track and speed okay. based on the alignment of these two guys. Sure. You know what I mean? So, okay. all right. But but no, I mean you. Good stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's good. And there isn't any right or wrong answer. Okay. That's how you're running. I'll guarantee you. A lot of times in my mind, George, it comes down to when a game starts. And I'm going through the first and second quarter. You know what I mean? Who are we handling? Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. Three or one sometimes is right. out the fucking window. Out the window. I mean, who do we got to double? Corey, yeah. Who do we got to double because of personnel? Exactly. Okay. Corey, I say, hey, Corey's kicking the shit out of that okay. Keep running left. Okay. And I got help on that guy. Okay. Or if there's a war daddy in there, we need four hands on the war daddy. Okay. And then I'll manage where we run, whether it's three or shitty, I throw it out the window. I'll know who's kicking whose ass in there, okay. where I got my best mismatch on. And if I can get a good mismatch, then I'll take it, I'll take it in that direction. Beautiful. Feel good about that, Coach Sharper? Yeah. All right, any questions on that, Coach? Any of the fundamentals or steps? We went over to a three technique. Anything on the block end or the combos or or, or, or anything on that on that deal? No. No? I don't get this many fucking phone calls on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. No kidding. I didn't get a chance to say hello. Uh, did you change the dates? No, it's 46 minutes I got. I'm leaving voicemails for myself. <laughs> Stop, send out 10 letters. <laughs> okay, we're going to read option? Yep. Now, okay. are you running, you're running Joe Reed, right? What do you, how do you handle it? How, what is your guys', I guess before I tell you, I ask you, what is your philosophy on blocking the backside? How do you guys block the backside? And man is left alone. Okay. Now, what happens, if, what happens if you run a 14 read or the zone this way? And that backer walks up and stands right there. Well, you know, we're screwed. We still try to run it. And if that, yeah, and if that guy drops down like he went over the other day, then right. we're in trouble. Okay. We didn't see a whole lot of that, though, to be honest Good. with you. But I still want to prepare for it. Right, you still want to be prepared. Yeah. What we do you know when I saw that the most was in the All-Star game. Yeah. Well, I know. I know so that's, that, that's exactly how they're stopping it. Okay. They're going to gap exchange and shit. Gap exchange. Yeah. yeah. There's no question. So it's going to it's going to it's going to come around sometime or another with what people without bringing an extra guy in there. That's the way when that tackle goes to zone, scream and go. Right. You know they 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 beat you to pull it into an unblocked guy. Right. Which is the same thing we ran into too. So I'll just tell you what we do. Okay. The first thing we do, I give this tackle a rule on the backside. All right. Anytime the linebacker, right, anytime the backside linebacker we're going to block gets head up or outside of you, of your lineman, okay, anytime he is head up or outside of you, okay, we are going to make what's called a man call. Okay, we're going to make what's called a man call. What that is, is that tells this guard and myself, block him. Block him, let him go. Okay? Now, what's the quarterback's job when a man calls man? He don't have to, first of all, I don't ever want to involve him in the calls of the offense. He don't have to know. No. To the end of the show, it don't matter. What is my rule? When that ball's in the air, he catches it, and he sees that tackle hit that end, hand the football off, son. Your read is done because of what he did. Mm -hmm. Alright? Now, second thing is, all right, the second step, that's the easy way. Make a man call. Let me ask you this though, just play devil advocate. That linebacker's head up or outside, then okay. you're, just, you're just gonna put your, you're just gonna get your tail back or go. You're just gonna say, I mean, if he gives it, you're just gonna just let him go one-on-one -on -one if that's what it comes to. At the very least, we're getting three or four yards. God bless. Is that right? Yep. Okay, now, just wanna make sure. You can say, well, not really. <laughs> Good, all, all right, right. we cleared that up. God, we got this cleared up. I understand. I'm glad we cleared that up. When I tell this guy, when I bang this guy, uh -huh. on the snap, I make a man call, I bang him, because I'm guessing that exchange. If it isn't, and he falls in here, come off and chase him. All right, so you're still eyeballing. Exactly. So I'm still getting the best of both worlds. So what I tell him is, all right, you can make a man call, but on the run, it re really turns into that. It turns into a sift. Okay. All right? So that, that so what you're saying doesn't take place. Maybe I make a man call and this guy starts doing this before the ball snap. 
You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. If he does that, then I may start to step at the end and freaking just go. Gotcha. Because he's going to hand it off now regardless. Gotcha. Once I step, I just may leave. Right. So all, the only reason I make a man call, and the only reason there's any call, period, is for his benefit. Okay. Not for mine. Because I'm the one that has to decipher the backside of this play on the run. I have to decipher it on the run. The only reason the call even exists is so the guard knows that we're not double teaming. Right. So gotcha. that's the only reason. Okay. So that tackle can handle that in the zone. All right. All right. Now, read option. Blocking up front doesn't change one iota for the line. We still go through everything we go through. All right. We still do everything. The calls are the same. All the stuff's the same. We still could possibly end up making a man call if the case showed for it. All right, we can still make a man call, and that way the option's off, the ball's handed off, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Now, everything's the same. I'm here, we're going to read, boom, boom, boom. Except now, when that end chases and the quarterback pulls it, he's not pulling it to run the ball, and the perimeter's not being blocked like it normally is on 14 and 15 read. Someone from somewhere in your formation, okay, whether it's a two by two set, all right? Yeah, just, just say it's a two by two. Okay. All right. Someone in your formation, okay, is perfect. It's really good versus versus that type of right there. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Yeah, you, you got a one high look. You got a team that's in an eight man uh -huh. front. First thing I want to do is get a two by two with the run read option. Man on the side backs up. Gets in pitch phase, option, deep man by side, here we go. All right, so now you yeah. said, you said, if, you said versus, versus the two, uh, four two look with a one high, the first thing you want to do is go into a double set and run read option. Absolutely, one high. Now, so, well, I shouldn't say that again, I lied to you. First thing I'm going to do is throw four first. <laughs> I like that. It's from the reality. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right, right. First thing, they're all gone. You heard deep shit. The second thing I'm going to do to run the football gotcha. is run read option. Because what happens in this set is you're running your normal read play and you're asking these two guys, this is what I found over four years, you're asking this guy and this guy to be great blockers on linebackers right. or strong safeties. Right. Now, while they can do it, well, what happens when that guy runs up here to snap the ball and puts himself in the bottom blockable position? Or ducks inside here, the end comes out, you can't get him. That was our problem. We're pounding sand going, block him so and so, block him. Well, you know what? I'm more worried about your ball catching skills. I'll ask you to block, but how am I going to ask you to block a guy that's not in a position to block? Right. So fine, the hell with him. Back up, get in pitch phase. Now you better be you better be option sound with all your bouncing around right, motion. Right, right. All right, and again you can do it either way. I can flip fly the back here, right. back him up and run it to the field boundary, right. whatever the look, whatever the matchup on this guy that you like better. You know what I mean? Who do I want to handle? So if we're getting an eight-man front, I'm going right now and running read option. One high eight-man front, read option. All right, that's my thing upstairs. I get an eight man front team, a Marshall, a Western Michigan, a Toledo, uh, uh, those people, I'm going right now. All right? Just so we're clear, just uh, I'm sure these guys know that, but just so we're clear, it's 14 read option. So if that end doesn't squeeze, it's still a handoff. We're still running 14. Yeah. If people think it's just an option, no, it is not. We're still yeah. running. Yeah. He can back up and do nothing, and there goes right. the damn ball, ball being run on his own. Exactly. It all, depends on, it all depends on what the, what the, the email, the ML line does. Very good point. And the, like I said, the, like Coach said, the blocking. The blocking to this tackle is the same. So but what you'll get first thing is, again, they want to get a gap exchange look. So now what happens? You go there, he gives a pull read, quarterback player, pitch player. Right. All right? So they want to do that with you and say, okay, well, they're going to run that read option again. Right. Good. Because as soon as he goes out here to gap exchange, man. he says, man, see you. Western Michigan did that to us two years ago, and we had two backs rush for 150 yards. Oh, I'll show it to you. It's on the tape. And, and, and they're gap exchanging this shit, and they're, we're popping right down the middle of the field, and there's nobody there. So the answers you have are built in. So when, when I call read option, I don't necessarily know that the option phase is going to get run. It may just be 14 read. But what I do know is I'm not putting these kids in a bad position to block a guy that they can't block. All right? They can't get to him, they can't block him. 
I'm not putting them in that position, all right? I'm putting them in a better position to, to, to run the freaking play, all right? Now, you can do the same deal out of a three by one set, and then again. Same play, no different, all right? Out of a three by one set, now you can run into the boundary, back this guy out, and run your read option face to the field. All right, but the beauty of it is, it's still the same. These guys right here, the bread and butter, all right, are running the same thing. All you're doing is taking a guy from the outside and you're window dressing it a little bit one way or the other. All right, by running a different formation. We run it, we motion the guy back in and run it out of empty. All right, same deal. All right, we run it, we run it out of a, a tight end set. We put a tight end here, all right, with the tail back there, put Cole Langer right here. Run it to the boundary, back up. Now we got options of the field. Gotcha. You know, same deal. It doesn't, doesn't make any difference. You get that eight man front structure, all right? You get that eight man front structure, that strong safety comes down as you're pounding into the boundary. Well, you got him. There's your hook. Block six in the box. There's seven, eight. And you're going to the field now. That end friggin' chase, you got that. That's a long way to come for that free to even come to play. So I like it versus those eight man front teams. I like it with the tight end attached. You know, I like it empty, motion the guy back in. I like the same deal, and I told Coach, I got a little bit of tape on it from what we did in the spring, I think. Hopefully the dumbass put it in there. But I like to have two backs. Read this way, chat around and get the pitch fix. Same, same deal. All right, so all those things that we do, all right, are, are the same thing that every option getting enough I'll tell you what, uh, we, go in, we go into two backs, we are going to see the eight man front. So if I want to dictate eight man front, it's like there you know how to dictate. Yep. That's exactly. the best thing. Yep. That's the one thing I think you versus people when they when, you, when they got to play all this stuff, they have a base idea how they want to play it. So you can dictate. Right. You want to run read option. You know if I get in trio, probably gonna be an eight man front. Right. Or if I get in solo, it's gonna be too high. You know? Right. So you can dictate what you want. Right. And then really, in essence, you do know what's gonna happen for the ball snap. What is solo? Solo or two by two with two by two receivers. Right. And trio is your three by one. Trio is three by one. Right. Then we have all our empty formations or right. you know, spread trick or thunder trick. All those just put guys in different spots. Right. It's the exact same formation. It just puts people, the tailback, the tailback is who's dictating our empty sets where we want the tailback. Like where we want, what we want to do with PJ. Okay, now, read bubble. Okay, 